this is Nick. I'm at the Northwest uh, Pinball and Arcade Show in Tacoma, and I'm joined by Josiah and Steve, and they have, this might upset EM people at first, until you hear the whole story, because they have a Zacharia Combat, take a look at it here, that has been retrofitted with fast pinball hardware and the Mission Pinball software framework, and what we have is a game that, well, I'll let, I'll let Josiah tell, uh, yeah. tell, tell the story of how this came to be. Hey, Nick. Um, so, we got this game originally as a random Craigslist find. We were on the way to... Yeah, so stop that bad boy yeah. out here. We were on the way to go trade another game, and he had advertised this thing as basically a... $50, save it, I'm taking it to the dump. So we saved it, and originally when we got it, as we found it, it was full of mold and rust. I mean full of mold, like the whole inside of it was white and fuzzy. All the mechs were just destroyed. So we brought it home kind of with the hope that maybe someday it would turn it into something, maybe just art. And um, we eventually decided we wanted to bring it back from the dead. But the problem is it's a Zachariah combat there's not a lot of them and we don't have all very good source for parts so we did the next best thing which I, I know some people are going to be sad about but we did it in the best of intentions we retrofitted the whole thing with brand new parts um, it, we, we stayed as true to the game as we possibly could we tried to replace all the mechanisms with, with light parts uh, and the result is what you see here uh, the rules are what they should be for combat so it's not a lot of change, it's uh... So it's essentially, you brought back a complete beater of an EM that was unredeemable. It was just going to go in the dumpster or be parted out. Yeah, we and were we told not to do it <laughs> by several people once they saw it. But you brought it back, and actually yeah. the rules are the same, it plays well. You've got a uh, LCD screen up here with the original artwork on it. You've got like a little uh, DMD, uh, which is actually two LCD screens together, I believe. Yeah, I'll, I'll let Steve describe kind of some of how the, the layout on the inside is put together. Okay. Oh, okay, that works. So, now these are actually two RGB LED panels linked together to make one DMD, and it's slightly smaller than your standard one, and it's run by a, a Teensy board hooked up into the computer, and there it goes. Right up onto the DMD. Now, we didn't do, Josiah and I, neither one of us did much of the development stage of it. We did the build stage. So we're very familiar with how it went together and how everything got all adjusted and laid out. And then our friend Ryan did the developer work. So it was nice when he plugged it in. We were about 90% on what we had with our programming based on our hardware and how we had it mapped out. Okay. And then Josiah's going to get the glass off here for you. Take here, I can see you got the the pop ring treatment with the LEDs. So yeah, the controlled LED LEDs. That? Yeah, those are all those are all addressable. So just like the inserts in this game. If this isn't a kit, you did this. Yourself. Yeah, this is all custom done. So each each one of these rings here. Uh, do you remember how many LEDs they have? There are 24 each. So there's 24 in each one of them. They're all addressable individually. So that means we can control brightness, color. Um, speed of flashing, anything. It's the same kind of technology that's used on the addressable insert ships. I'll show you on the bottom, but you can, it'll be probably hard to see with the camera, but there's individual chips on the bottom of that thing. You can kind of see in the reflection how there's each one. So really once we start doing more with this, we can make a few chase patterns, all sorts of fun stuff if we want to. And all of the lights on the play field are RGBs? Yes, they are. They're all individually controlled. Um, the GI are LEDs also, but they're not addressable LEDs. Uh, so they just come on with whatever color you have on them. And then we have those hardwired for the GI, so you turn the machine on and the GI is on. But the saw is going to temper up here. All right. This is our amateur mess of wiring. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, basically this game is powered um, by our computer down here. We also have our amp for our sound system. 
uh, our two power supplies, our power filter board from Fast. In the back box there is the Nano, um, the it's, it's the Nano controller, um, it's their like, smaller version of a brain. That's hooked up to these I.O. boards. Um, there's an 0804, there's one here and one in the back, and then a uh, 3208 right here. So those are our switches and drivers. Um, but basically, as you can see, everything was replaced in this game. Everything had to go. And we just, you know, yeah, the trough, we had to cut a new trough in. Um, we wanted to do a uh, two-ball Molotov all just to give it a little bit more pep. It doesn't mean much, though, because this game is so mean anyway. It just dies right away, so. Yeah, but. Um, it's better, it's fun. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I, know, I know that for... EM guys who are mostly what you you talk to, Nick. This is a little bit of a different beast. Um, but we, we wanted this game to be playable. We wanted to share it with people. It's not common and it's better than becoming art or a dumpster beast. So. Let's go ahead and see what, uh, see what their gameplay looks like. Yeah. I think this is great. I mean, uh, I love my EMs, but when they can't be saved or they're beyond uh, restoration, and especially if in, in this case with no back glass and all the mechs were completely rotted out and, and rusted and they, you know, it, it was destined to be a parts machine, but in this case, they've restored Rota Combat glass back to life. What do you want? That's right. Oh, uh, glass on, I guess is good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Makes, make it a little quieter. And we, and we also thought, when would we ever get to play a Zucker Rota Combat? I've right, never seen never one. Yeah, yeah, they're so rare as well that, uh, and we have no no frame of reference as to uh, the relation of how this plays to what the original plays as. It looks like it's kind of fast, but we don't think it's this fast. Well, we haven't dialed any of the power down yet. Either. This is all on full power. Yeah, it is. This is really, really fast. But then, yeah, the EM itself is too. So uh, great, great. A little, a little bit more sound. The sound effects just got thrown in recently, so they're a little louder than we want them to, so we've been and then, keeping the volume down just a touch. And then pinball plaid, what is that? That is uh, just kind of what we call it. That's ourselves. kind of our little merry pranksters of pinball creation that we have. Uh, it's me and Steve and our friend Ryan Richardson and a couple of the other friends from my band. They helped do the sound and stuff that my band did. Uh, Ryan did most of the programming, so yeah, it's just our group. We're going to do more. Team effort made it come together a lot faster. So I'm gonna get Josiah to see if he can play this at all. It's very okay. unforgiving. All right, let's give it a go. I imagine you'll probably be able to hear the sound effects on there. <laughs> yep, that's combat. But we never said we were very good at pinball. See if we can uh, get anything going here that's a little more interactive, sets it apart from the original. Uh, apparently not. <laughs> we might have to take glass off and do a little <laughs> demo. <laughs> Give them some time to come together. Or oh not. My gosh. Ball save. Oh, yeah. like ball save. We did add a little ball save on it because it's so hard to play. We discussed my ball as well, but just for the show. Now he's gotten the flash mode, so it's lit up those LED rings underneath the cap and altered the scoring per the original rules. So you get 1,000 per pop hit versus 100. Or I believe we set it for 15 seconds. That spinner really goes. Sometimes you can get 20, 25 yeah, inputs on a good spin. We're suckers for a good spinner. <laughs> now if you can draw it, I get when I try to hit that. If you can drop the bomb target bank, that's going to open them up to basically the next tier of the game. Oh my gosh, what is so this? mean? We really only have two tiers of the game. The bomb drop mode, which enables you to start multi-ball, and it also augments the scoring on uh, virtually the whole play field. The one thing we did for multi-ball was make it two-time scoring for the duration. So it's a little hard to get, but if you get it, you can make a lot of points quickly. Well, I think it's just brilliant. I mean, it plays really good. I think that the sounds that you chose and the way that you kitted it out is true to the original game. And, uh, I mean, I really can't... I've never seen an, an EM conversion that, that was, uh, as you say, reimagined as, like this. I mean, it, I think it's brilliant. 
Yeah, we were really happy with it. Uh, didn't think we would have it this far for the show here, but we actually exceeded our own expectations a bit. Next year we can have it nice and polished and have some little animations going on the uh, DMD there. Nick, you want me to get you playing really quick, man? Oh, I'm good. I'm good. So I, yeah, I'm good. So I see, I see you uh, have this little uh, light show that you've done. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ryan, this is actually one of the first things he did was this little just a track mode show. Um, it's it's a lot of fun when you have all of a sudden a bunch of addressable inserts. You know, I mean, you can you can do lots of stuff. Um, your imagination is the limit and uh, we would just like to encourage anybody if you yes. have an old game that you can't find parts for you know that, that's, that's totally destroyed you can always go and even if it's not destroyed maybe like you this. have your mechs that move and you can always get uh, equivalent coil replacements yeah. for them too you make them a little, uh, a little right, more stable you know not as much maintenance well, I really appreciate your time, and uh, this is a really, really great example of how to save an EM. Appreciate it. Thanks, Thank man. you. Nice.